Senator Peters. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Mr. Graves, it is uh, great to, to see you uh, here before us in the committee. And so I want to say, uh, I'll start off for the record uh, and for, for my colleagues uh, uh, to share my appreciation for the work that we did together when I was a member of the House and certainly know your passion for small business. And uh, together we uh, collaborated to uh, pass the State Small Business uh, Credit Initiative, uh, which uh, uh, after its creation is responsible for over 10,000 jobs in Michigan and thousands of jobs uh, all across uh, the country. Uh, we did that together in 2010. Now here we are a decade later, and uh, we're about to further realize uh, uh, again, once again, uh, the success of that program with a $10 billion investment in the America's uh, Rescue Plan, which I am confident will continue to be successful and create more jobs. And the work that you do in the small business community, I think, is, bodes well for your work uh, here at the Department of uh, Commerce. So again, thank you for for that uh, effort on your part and look forward to, uh, if confirmed, uh, continuing uh, to, to work with you. And as you know, my, my, one of my passions uh, is manufacturing, coming from Michigan in a manufacturing state and uh, someone who uh, in my core believes that you can never be a great country if you don't actually make things and manufacturing is, uh, is the core of our economy. Uh, you and I have had the opportunity to discuss uh, my proposal for a national Institute of Manufacturing, which will elevate manufacturing, coordinate all of the 58 plus programs dealing with manufacturing across 11 different federal agencies. Uh, in that proposal, we'll create a chief manufacturing officer, develop a national strategic plan for manufacturing, revive and elevate the National Manufacturing Council that currently exists as well as a, a host of, of other initiatives. So my question to you, Mr. Graves, is can you speak uh, to uh, what do you believe the Department of Commerce role should be uh, in manufacturing and, and how can we improve the manufacturing uh, environment in this country? Thank you, Senator. Is, uh, uh, I very much have enjoyed our conversations uh, recently and over the years and thank you uh, for everything that you've done to support the State Small Business Credit Initiative and small businesses. Um, and as it relates to your question, I completely agree that manufacturing is vital to, uh, to this nation's economy, to uh, our long-term prospects, that we need to do more to increase uh, the support for manufacturers. And that uh, includes a balance of ensuring that we have a fair and level playing field across the globe using the export controls uh, that the department has. At the same time, making sure that we're uh, investing in research and R&D uh, and, in, and innovation. Um, that we're creating the jobs of the future, uh, and that we're also um, using the Economic Development Administration, uh, the Minority Business Development Administration to support those small and mid-sized manufacturers at critical times in their growth. Um, and I, I, I would, if confirmed, uh, would also want to work uh, with the Departments of Education and Labor to ensure that uh, we are uh, supporting the American workers uh, getting them the training that they need uh, so that they can be successful. But I would absolutely want to work closely with you on, uh, on your proposal. And, uh, and as you know, I've spent a lot of time with manufacturers in, in Michigan as well as in, in my home state of, of Ohio. So this is uh, near and dear to my heart. Well, I know that, Ms. Grayson. I look forward to, to having that opp opportunity. You know, one thing uh, that we also have to focus on uh, as we compete globally uh, is that we have to make sure the rules are, are fair. Uh, we know we have the, the best manufacturing firms in the world. We've got the best workers uh, in the world. We can outcompete anybody in the world, but we have to make sure the, the rules are fair. And sometimes that's very difficult if you're in a small industry uh, or, uh, and, and trying to take on uh, nation states that are engaged uh, in predatory trade uh, actions. Uh, the issue in Michigan, we have our cherry growers, for example, who are right now uh, hanging on uh, for their lives uh, uh, because of dumping from Turkey of uh, cherries that could very well put them out of business. It's one of our, uh, our uh, iconic uh, agricultural products. Uh, in fact, Traverse City area is cherry capital of the world for tart cherries. Uh, and we want to make sure there's a level playing field, but they, they can't hire the army of lawyers and, and economists necessary to bring a trade action. So I've introduced legislation with Senator Burr to create a, a team at the Department of Commerce dedicated to monitoring trade flows and producing self-initiation recommendations so that the federal government can help these small producers, these small manufacturers, stand up uh, for their rights and their ability to compete globally. 
So my question to you is, uh, uh, Mr. Graves, is if confirmed, will you work with me to advance this bipartisan self-initiation legislation to provide a, an avenue for small trade exposed uh, sectors to have the government self-initiate trade cases and basically go to bat for them? Well, Senator, you absolutely have my commitment. And you've talked with me extensively about the challenge that the cherry growers are having in Michigan um, and other businesses. And I think that we need to use the tools at our disposal, including the anti-dumping and countervailing duties uh, laws, uh, rules, to, to ensure a, a fair competition because our uh, workers and our businesses can outcompete the world as long as we are playing on a fair uh, playing field. Great. Thank you, Mr. Graves.